Hi, and welcome to another Domingo Studios stream on our Gophers game we're working on. Today I'm not really sure exactly um, where things are going to go, but uh, it's going to focus on story today. Uh, as we talked about the last time on the stream, I'm kind of moving away from the whole family reunion direction, going more towards this uh, grandpa who's kind of the leader of your, your clan, your tribe of Gophers. Uh, he's reaching his 100th birthday, and you're going to throw a party for him, and, and when you, when a gopher reaches their 100th birthday, maybe um, all the, the heads of the various uh, parts of the family get together to celebrate, or something like that. Uh, and so that's kind of where we're going to head in that direction today. Um, one of the things I wanted to emphasize, just based on a lot of design uh, reading and research uh, I've been doing lately, and actually there's a, a number of good... Uh, Gama Sutra articles that came out this last week, uh, actually, or this week, I should say, uh, revolve uh, around game design and, and story design and such. I retweeted them on the Domingo Studio, a couple of them, but um, we're just, uh, you know, going to kind of work in that direction and, and see where it takes us and kind of figure things out as we go along. So... Okay, uh, so we got a document, we're going to use um, Dropbox paper for this. Uh, I really like it, it works uh, well with kind of uh, just designing things out quickly and, and fast, as well as maybe we'll do some, um, some uh, drawing as well with some ideas. But So one of the things I want to accomplish, so uh, first off I guess we'll name this Doc Story. And we'll do something maybe like um, main premise. Uh, I think I spelled it right. Um, maybe we'll just do something nice like this. We can do something like uh, yeah. ah. I'm a terrible speller. Your grandpa is the head of the tribe of gophers. He is 100. He's 100. Yeah, um, your grandpa's head of your, uh, your tribe of gophers, his 100th birthday is approaching, and, um, and as uh, his 100th birthday is approaching, uh, his 100th day is approaching, and you have been Ask with the job of rounding up, uh, tasked with the job of getting all of the tribe together together to celebrate his birthday. Along the way, you discover um, one thing I was thinking of doing was so you don't know much about your parents from the start of this game. So you pretty much have been raised by your grandma and your grandpa. Um, your grandpa, your grandma um, dies off uh, first. It's kind of mean to do that. I debated either way. Um, but she dies off, so your grandpa's really lonely, and so he really only has you around. Um, the grandson or the granddaughter. Um, I might go with granddaughter. I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet. I haven't figured that one out. Um, but just you around left, so you're kind of his... Uh, you both kind of take care of each other, you know? He's at an old old age. 100 years old is pretty old. Uh, so he needs help uh, being taken care of, and you kind of feel obligated. I want to do a whole lot of backstory with this. Um, one of the first things you enter this game with is what I was thinking about is maybe doing a a set of screenshots of um, 
uh, not screenshots, but like uh, glimpses into the past. And so maybe on your grandpa's, uh, what, 50th birthday or 40th birthday, it's you and your grandma and your, gra uh, sorry, it's you, your grandma, your grandpa, they're kind of rocking, you know, your grandpa is maybe rocking you back and forth as a little baby gopher or something like that, you know, uh, on his 50th birthday. And then on his 60th birthday, you and grandpa are down by the stream, you know, sailing boats or something like that. So you're 10 years old at this point, you know, um, no, maybe, no, no, 50 is wrong. Maybe, maybe like, uh, we're talking, because I realized 50 means you'd be 50 years old in this game. So maybe something more like like uh, 70 years old. So that way, when this game hits, you're maybe... Uh, that's still wrong. Wow. I'm thinking 100 years probably isn't going to work too well. Let's try... Um, because I wanted to be a little bit reasonable with this, a little rational. See, so this is this is bucking the game down. You start talking, and then you realize, boy, this isn't consistent. This isn't consistent. I gotta fix this. So we're gonna do his. Um, this is your grandpa's 80th birthday. That sounds about right. Because then it can be 60, um, 60 years old when you're first being rocked. So maybe like one or two years old. It is his 60th birthday. Then it is 70. Then it is maybe we could do like the 60, 65, 70, 75, 80. Or something like that, um, you know, uh, as kind of a way to do it. So we could do, and we won't, we won't even do exact in increments. We'll do something different like that. But the idea is, we'll show glimpses. So at, you know, when you're one years old, you're getting rocked by your grandma and your grandpa. At, you know, at his 80th birthday or something like that. And then you know, we don't see anything about your parents. We know nothing of your parents, and that's kind of cool because I want to spread lore throughout the game that kind of tells about your parents. You're going to going to get, gather up the rest of your family, they're bound to have stories about your parents, of who they were, what they're like, and maybe part of that is going to be piecing together the, the what's real about your parents and what's not. And maybe I don't even tell the player. Like, maybe you go to one side of the family, you know, the, the Arctic side, where all the Arctic gophers live or something like that, you know, and they paint this big, beautiful picture of your parents, and then you go to the 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 hill country or, or the forest and they paint a completely different, you know, your parents fought, you know, a lot and they, you know, and, you know, just different pictures of your parents. Not necessarily, in an, I don't necessarily want to be inconsistent in the overall arc of your parents, but I want to be, um, I want to sow some questionability because, you know, you talk just it, like in real life, you talk to any of your relatives, they don't always have the exact picture of who you are. Each, each of your relatives has kind of a different piece. And if you combine them all, you might have a decent picture. Uh, but even then, you could still be missing some important pieces, you know. Um, but anyways, so, back to what we're dealing with, uh, kind of the main premise. Your grandpa is the head of your tribe of gophers. His 80th birthday is approaching. It's a big, momentous occasion. Maybe he's the first gopher, first head gopher to ever reach 80. Let's, let's go with that. His 80th birthday... And the 80th birthday is approaching, and it's a uh, uh, huge, huge accomplishment, as he is the first tribe leader to ever reach a reach this milestone. Milestone. Hmm. Hmm. Your grandpa has tasked you with the. Uh, your grandpa has asked you to go spread the word. Spread of his birthday celebration. Um, and gather up the extended family. All right, so now we've got some. We, we, we're we're narrowing our premise a little bit more. Uh, there's still it's still very broad, which is what we want. We want a broad premise so that way, the, that way we can go many different directions, and we'll start narrowing it down. But so the main premise is your grandpa's the head of your tribe of gophers. Okay, 
his birthday is approaching, and it's a huge accomplishment as he's the first tribe leader, or the first, yeah, tribe leader to ever reach this milestone. So I guess maybe the other gophers have died up. It's a huge momentous occasion. It's something that we want to gather the whole family for. You know, if it's just a regular birthday, you don't necessarily have to bring all your cousins and relatives together for it. Uh, even just a regular 80th birthday. But if he's the first tribe leader to st at 80 years old to make it to 80, that's a significant occasion for the whole tribe. So your grandpa has asked you to go spread word of his birthday celebration and gather up the extended family. Um, you know, it's an exciting occasion. Maybe some will come, maybe some won't. Um, so what we want to do now is we got some a basic premise written down. We want to move on to something like and and I, there is no pattern. Here. I'm not. I mean, we're gonna do you know maybe we'll do like the the typical three act story arc or something like that. But I'm not a professional story writer. Um, I'm just trying to get some some core ideas down and and kind of move forward with that. So I want to do some backstory. So let's do some background information. Um, about this. So let's start off with something like um, you. And I don't have a, I have a, I don't have a name for you yet. I don't even know if you're a male or a female. So I mean, I I don't know anything about you at this point. So it's going to be very generic, very general. Um, so background: you were um, you were raised by your grandparents. Um, you have no idea what happened to your parents, but you love them very much and are thankful to have had them be your uh, thankful to have had them um, no idea what happened to your parents but you love your grandparents very much and are very thankful to have had them around growing up okay um, so now we set the stage you know nothing about your parents we got that key idea across and in fact I probably should be doing more of a bullet point list before I even go more into a, a story. In fact, I think I like that idea better. Um, we'll do a nice little bullet point list. I'm going to paste this in. Um, bullet points. You were raised by your grandparents. Uh, you have no idea what happened to your parents. And I had wrote before that you loved your, you love your grandparents a lot. I don't think I'm going to go that direction. I think, because one of the things I would like to do, I've been pondering about, is is having you participate a little bit, not just do snapshots of life. I, I, I could go either way. I could do snapshots of your life growing up, so snapshots at each of your of your grandpa's birthday. Uh, and I really like that. It, it's, a, it's a sense of consistency, it feels like. But at the same time, I also wanted to build some emotional connections with your grandpa by having you interact with your grandpa when you're younger and as you kind of grow up through the ages. So I'm not sure if I'm going to go that route, I might do maybe a mixture of both, where we start off with um, with an image. You know, oh, here's you at one, your grandpa, grandparents taking care of you. And then we jump to five years old, where you're playing on the ground. You know, maybe your grandpa's out helping you do sailboats. Then we jump to ten, you know, or not even ten, maybe like nine or some, you know, some random number to make it feel a little more, a little more organic, a little less measured out. Um... So a nine or whatever, and then suddenly now you're in control of this. The image is gone. You're in control, and your grandpa's yelling at you to come get, come get something or whatever. And maybe you got some friends that are like, no, no, come play with us. And you kind of have your choice of where you want to go, and that kind of helps. You know, it creates a little bit of trust. I'm not trying to build this big massive RPG, but I want you to. I want there to be some definitive choices in this game. Um, so you can go help your grandpa out, and that kind of helps you build your relationship with him more. Or you can go play with your friends, and your grandpa's disappointed in you, you know, or whatever. Um, because I want to use this later on, when you start to discover who wants to off your grandpa at his 80th birthday, and 
you know, kind of become head of the clan type of an idea. Um, yeah, I kind of almost want to make this, you can choose to stop them or not to stop them, you know, based on your attitude, based on your relationship with your grandpa, you know, maybe you chose him at the beginning of the game to ignore your grandpa and say, I don't want to deal with him. And then suddenly someone wants to off him and it's, you know, you're like, oh, I don't care. Let him, let him die. Let someone else do the drive. That's fine. Great. And that's fine. That works. You know, maybe, um, maybe that's the route you choose. Uh, or maybe you don't choose. Maybe you choose to help your, you know, again, I kind of want some tangible aspects. I also want it to play into how much your grandpa shares with you too, because I want, especially in that first world, to, you know, your grandpa's still around, it's his 80th birthday is coming up, so maybe you've got this idea of the, when you interact with him, his attitude is a little different based on some of the choices you made when you were younger. Not in a negative way, because he still, he still loves you, you know, he's, he's a grandpa, he's, he's got his wisdom, his respect, he's the tribe leader, he still has that sense of duty to you to, to love you, protect you, even if you guys aren't close. Um... So maybe there's some background story he can even share or shed light on about your parents because, you know, early on in the game, because you had built that relationship with him in the prior, like, prequel area. Uh, and, or maybe not, I don't know. I just, I want to leave the door open to that sort of possibilities. You know, I need to start narrowing things down so I can start focusing. I know what my core mechanic is going to be. I, I know what that, that core gameplay element is going to be. So I need to make sure I still stay razor focused and not get too feature heavy, you know, I mean, this is the time right now where I can throw all that stuff out because nothing's set in stone. But when I sit down and start doing some programming and some development and start actually hashing out, okay, this needs to get done in a reasonable amount of time, then I got to start, I don't want to say cutting things, but then I got to start saying, okay, is this important enough to keep or not? Uh, and the early stuff I really do want to put a lot more emphasis on, a lot more emphasis on keeping, because I want to build that emotional component in early on. So, um, so anyway, so you're raised by your grandparents. Um, you have no idea what happened to your parents or why they're not around. Around. Um, uh... You raised by your grandpa, no idea what happened to your parents while they're not around. Um, I, I mean, honestly, I want to kind of keep it that simple. Uh, I don't really want to do too much more as far as this this, this background is concerned. Um, this is where you get into debating about which direction you go. Because part of me, I want to start with, okay, I want to start the game in order, working my way through the game, piece by piece, chronologically, but then also I need to develop kind of the whole arc as well. So, um, we'll do, uh, we'll do background, then we'll do some, uh, do main story arc. We'll do kind of the main story arc, which is, um, essentially, we'll do some more bullet points here, because I like that. The story arc is, you uh, gather up all your exploration. Alright, um, next story arc is, um, um, a member of your extended family. And that would be interesting, actually. I don't think I want to do it, but that would be interesting, is to make it dynamic. Who wants to off your grandpa? You know, let's be honest. Let's make it dynamic. You know, and I could actually make all the conversations dynamic, too, so that it's the same clues that lead you up to the offing of him, you know, the, the perpetrator, the guy who's going to attempt to commit this. A heinous act, but just which world you experience it in. So maybe you go to this other world, and it's got a totally different story. But the the dialogue that comes out is the same that would be for the person who's going to kill him, or something like that. You know, and then that could change based on you know if you play the game. You know, your friends like, oh man, it was such and such extended relative in the ice world that 
that wanted to kill him, or, or in the other four places, no, no, I got the one in the forest world who wanted to do it. You know, it's kind of the same dialogue, but it adds that difference. I don't know if I want to go that route yet. Um, I'm kind of worried that could cause problems, because I want to do many stories in each world. Um, because I think that will be, that'll add some, re add some, uh, some more value to the people paying for the game. So a uh, member of the family wants to take over as tribe leader. And to look grandpa at his 87th birthday. Birthday bash. Huh. What's we'll that celebration? Um, that's kind of the main story arc. Um, you have to find out which relative and stop stop them or help them. Um, maybe who knows? Who knows? Um, that's kind of the main story arc, which is great. I I want this. I want to build some story into it, but I don't want it to be. I'm not trying to build this RPG, I'm not trying to build this big elaborate story. I'm trying to build a fun game. But I want there to be some story to it. So keeping these arcs small is, and keeping that main arc um, important. Uh, sorry, not important. Um, focused is important. Um, main premise, background, story arc. Um, uh, extended family, you have to find out what's up there and stop them and help them. Next, uh. so what do I need? So let's let's start, let's step back here. So we've got a main story arc, we've got some background ideas. Um, uh, again, we'll fill in more information about this, but let's step back and see kind of what do we need to just accomplish what we have right now for this story. Um, you know, and I, I also want to do a little bit of a timeline doc too, so maybe we'll add a new doc. We'll call it Timeline of Events. So this is what I want to do. I want to start with the Timeline of Events first. Um, timeline of Events. Um, yeah, that'll work. Mm hmm Okay. Let's do first um, your birth, uh, one year old. Mm -hmm. ah, let's do it by grandpa's birthday. Grandpa's sixty. Sixty birthday, and then we'll do some description, a uh, little description about it. And then we'll do a description of the event. Um, what are we going to see when we hit this part of the story? We're going to see Grandpa rocking you in a chair with Grandma nearby. Maybe knitting, knitting. Grandma, Grandpa, rocking you to sleep in a chair with Grandma nearby knitting. Um, Grandpa and Grandma around the fireplace because I think it could be cool around the fireplace. Grandpa and Grandma sitting around the fireplace. Grandma sitting around the fireplace. Wow. Grandpa rocks you to sleep in a chair with Grandma nearby, uh, knitting and looking onward. 
Maybe I'm watching. Maybe that's a good idea. Watching. Yeah. So we develop some bonding in our meeting. Um, our next event would be let's do. Oops. Um, let's do Grandpa's sixty-third birthday. Um, mm -hmm. 63rd, oh. <laughs> 63rd birthday, all right, um, uh, grandpa, on the floor, watch it on the floor with you while you play with a car, maybe, <sighs> or a truck, play with a truck, wow. Oh, it's a truck. So yeah, these are going to be like humanized gophers. Let's be honest, because you know the, the gophers is, is cool for the the talents and the skills that they bring, but we want them to to do a little humanization to it because uh, to help you better connect with them. So some familiarity, uh, not necessarily with your childhood, but familiarity with humans in general. Um, so, uh, all right. So we've got that going. Um, while you go up on the floor with you, while you play with the truck, and maybe grandma in the kitchen. Kitchen nearby, occasionally. All right, now we're on to Grandpa's 69th birthday. So you'd be about 10 years old around here. Birthday. 69th birthday. Um, you and Grandpa are. Okay, so, okay, I, I did say I wanted to, hmm, no, I'm going to do 67, because Grandpa's 67th birthday. You and Grandpa, Grandpa, are out visiting your grandma's gravesite. Gravesite. It hasn't been that long, but. You can tell Grandpa misses her dearly. Grandpa's 16th, 70th birthday. 70th birthday. Alright, this is one where I'm thinking we're going to bring in some interactions. So these will all be. We're going to call it snapshots, which were like non interactable animated sequences. So, I guess, um, it's uh, cinematics, I guess, something like that. Um, 70th birthday, interactable. All right, so maybe you're going to be out. 
<laughs> Perfect. This is where we introduce the first um, element of gameplay. Collecting things. Collecting you, you're, The goal of the game is you're going to go around and collect these gophers. Uh, but um, this is where we can interact, uh, add that first element of collecting, of picking up things, using your finger to move around the screen. So, um, 70th birthday, Grandpa, Grandpa is out um, playing with the truck. So there's the two of you. Fireplace. Fireplace is in use in the background. All right, perfect. This is awesome because I think I'm going to add a little cool element in here. I really like it. Um, so, in this first image, in this first event, um, uh, some of the key things I want to get across in this first, uh, some of the keys in this first snapshot is. Um, is, uh, some of the key things is that your, is, first off, is the bond that the grandpa, that you and the grandpa are already forming at such a young age. So, bond, so hold on, grandpa became very good care of you and forming bond. The other thing I want to get across is fireplace is running and firewood level is high because it's the start. It's full. There's a lot there. Um, those are some key points. And I'm going to use kind of the firewood level I'm thinking as a, a foreshadowing of your grandma's death. And then on your 70th birthday, the interactable scene is going to be your grandpa out on your screen chopping down a tree to gather more firewood and you're collecting. Kind of the idea of a new beginning. By 70th birthday, you're 11 years old um, or 10 or 11, you know, 10 or 11, somewhere in there. You're starting to, to grow up more. You're not as needy as you used to be. You know, you're not a baby anymore. You're becoming a kid, especially when out your grandma around, you really had to grow up a little bit. So that idea of your cop picking up firewood, it's your, your grandma has passed and now, you know, at 70 years old, your, your grandpa's starting to get over it and he goes and he cuts the fire down. So maybe in here I'll do like a 79th or 78th or something like that and we'll see your grandpa, you know, maybe in his chair with his head down and you're on the floor playing by yourself and the fire's out and there's no firewood left. I like this idea already. I really do. Um, so this next one is, is 63rd. Is, um, so what is it? Uh, grandpa, um, so what I want to get across is Grandpa feels like he can't interact. Hold on. Um, uh, I want to. I want this uh, feeling of more independence than a baby, but still dependent on grandpa. So more independent for you, but tell but still dependent. Grandpa. Grandpa. So maybe in this scene, we're going to do, and I really don't like doing, I really don't want to do tons of cutscenes, but I want to establish uh, a little bit of the story, and I want the, the cutscenes, we'll start off a little heavy, um, you know, with three cutscenes here in a row, and there are four cutscenes in a row, and then there'll be an interaction, and then maybe there'll be another cutscene, and then there'll be more interaction, and then eventually it's just going to go to full-blown interaction with no cutscenes. I don't really want to do a ton of cutscenes in the game. There'll be some, 
um, like maybe at the beginning of a level, at the beginning of a world, excuse me, or at the end of a world or something like that. There might be some. But I don't want to do a ton of cutscenes. Um, I do want to include some dialogue and some interaction, but I don't want to do a ton of cutscenes. So, um, so it might be a little heavy here at the beginning, but eventually I want to move uh, away from that because there's a game. I want it to be interaction, but I also need some establishment. I need to be able to establish that that bond with your grandpa from an early stage. I'm liking this already. Okay, so more independence for you, but still dependent on grandpa. Um, fireplace. Fireplace is again, is running. Running normally. Firewood level is low. Is low. Firewood level is low. Lower. Um, and then I, I'm not certain if I'm going to stick with a, a one here in the middle, but I might. shifting to make sure there was no one chatting in the chat room, but well, we'll see. Let's see. Alright, um, for maybe 66th birthday. Maybe I won't tell you. That's an interesting idea. Maybe I won't tell you that you're not around. That um, that grandma is gone. Maybe I'll just have a scene sat with your sad grandpa in the chair, and you kind of playing on the floor like, "What's going on?" And the fireplace is out, and the firewood is gone, and there's no grandma around. And then in the next scene, we become very blatant about it and do the grave set. Is it? I kind of like that idea. Uh, we'll see. We'll, we could change this stuff up. So, it is. Head down and more. So at 66, you'd be seven years old. So maybe you're not on the floor. Maybe you're up. It's like a, I don't know. <sighs> Sitting in this chair with his head down. You're on the floor. I don't know about the floor idea. And you are nearby him trying to comfort, comfort him. Uh, the goal of this scene is to get across. Let's start with some goals. Um, again, um, uh, get across Grandpa's sadness, sorrow, sorrow. You starting to stand up on your own. Fireplace has gone out. The firewood it is empty. And then the 67th, you could do like 68th, maybe just split it up. Nah, it's getting too bad. 69. Nah, 67. Just one year later, 67th birthday. Uh, you and your grandpa are visiting your grandpa's gravesite. It hasn't been that long. You can tell your grandpa this is for dearly. It's only been about a year, maybe. Um, but this is an out. Of, this is our first scene that's going to be outside the home. So, um, the goal is to clearly communicate. 
Starting to get over it, or maybe Grandpa is still struggling. So struggling. So it doesn't have to be a long scene, but it, the scene is, is there just to clearly communicate the passing. Uh, it's still struggling. Um, but, uh, let's. So, and then finally, the seventh birthday, Grandpa is out with you cutting a tree. Your job is to help him pick up all the this firewood. So this is going to be kind of one of those um, canned examples where he cuts down the tree and suddenly a bunch of little firewood logs pop out of it. You know, this is one of those things where where we're gonna where we're gonna blow the line between realism and the game. Because in real life, you have to go down, you have to actually cut the limbs off each tree, you know, cut the branches and the limbs off the trees and actually cut them into logs. And then, you know, pieces of wood. Uh, here, um, whoa. Okay. I guess I can spell it right. Why is it not like it? Well, I guess it wants to separate. Okay. Um... So, but I think it'll lend to the gameplay. Again, it'll just be one screen. There won't be too much. You just bring it back to your grandpa when you're done. Or bring it to maybe we'll have like a wheelbarrow or, or some some obvious place for you to bring it back to. Or maybe not. Maybe we actually have you bring it back to your house. Maybe it's just like right outside your house. Um, you know. Or maybe... Maybe the grave site is in the front yard. Well, okay. So this is where we're getting into some stuff where I'm not sure about yet. Um, so up until now, you've seen my levels as, you know, the farm where the gopher just lives in a hole. I'm considering changing that to where there's like a gopher community. Because again, you're part of this gopher tribe. So maybe there's this whole gopher community and you're in this gopher village. And maybe the first world actually takes place in this village itself. So I'm not sure if I want to go there yet or not. I, I really am not. Um, I, I just don't know. Uh, I kind of want to try. But I'm just not certain. Because if I go with that route, it's really got to be much more side-scrolling. Not fully, but much more side-scrolling, um, instead of top-down, like, but I was already planning, I was planning to do, like, a 45-degree angle, so I, I guess it can work with that, a 45-degree angle, I mean, we might do a little less, do a little bit more, like, a, a, a not a straight 45, but, like, a 40-degree angle, um, or, sorry, a 50-degree angle, it depends on how you're angling, but, so, more of a, more detail oriented than top down, but we'll see. I'm still new to all this stuff. So, uh, Grandpa's out with you. You're cutting down a tree for more firewood. Your job is to help you pick up the loose firewood and possibly return it. And possibly return it to um, the. Firewood. That actually might be good here because it would teach you about moving the character around and picking things up, which is just easy to use well, but we've talked it. Um, you know. I, and maybe this is where maybe we'd have like a little like a cart thing that runs that comes around behind you and when you pick it up it goes in the cart behind you. So getting used to having something dragging around behind you. It's a cool, interesting idea. Um, and then where you learn to, to navigate the world, you know, you move through navigate between things. You go and you watch your grandpa, he moves into the house 
and then you can learn to follow him, you know. Maybe you pick up all the firewood as he says, like, all right, let's put it in the house or something like that, and then he moves into the house, and then you can follow him into the door. And that's where you learn, oh, I can go into things. I can interact with both things. Um, it's an interesting idea. Out with you cutting down a tree from a firewood job is to help him pick up all the loose firewood and possibly return it to uh, the f and return it return it in um, and possibly put it inside the house. Um, we could even have you light the fire. Maybe you have to go grab the lighter. Maybe Grandpa has you to light the fireplace, so you have to the lighter in the house. I don't know, maybe this is bad because he's only 11 years old and he's playing with the lighter. I don't, I don't know. We're going to assume that our character is competent, uh, even at a young age. So, what is the goal of this scene? Um, the goal of this scene would be to uh, your grandpa, grandpa has moved past your grandma's death. He's not, you know, obviously he still misses her, but he's he's found a way past it now. Um, you are more capable and independent. Ah, in I'm a terrible spell. Um, your gram. For help, um, you learn how to pick things up. Navigate with something behind you. A wheelbarrow. I know wheelbarrow check can really one this up, but or maybe it'll be like a cart or something. Cart. Um we learn to interact with the world. Uh, you learn to go into buildings. And that's one thing that always annoys me in games, is when you've got buildings with doors that you can't go into. It annoys me to no end. It's like, I, especially in 2D games, it just, and I'm probably going to come back to regret that statement because I'm probably going to end up having buildings you can't go into too. But I, that annoys me. And I don't, I don't want that to be part of my game. So I'm going to try my best to make sure every... Everything in the game that you see can be interacted with, in, in, in the sense of if it's a door, you can, if it's a house or something, you can go into it. Now, I'm not saying that it's not going to be boring inside, but you can go into it. Um, assuming it's not a locked door, too, because there will probably be locked doors, So, but that'll be obvious. Uh, you to go into buildings. Uh, you learn to start fire with. A, and maybe fire will be an important part of this game. I really like this already. I'm going to start a fire with a lighter from your know, grandpa. Maybe he tells you to like, hold on to it. He's like, that was your grandma's favorite fireplace lighter or something like that. You hold on to it, you know. Something like that. And that becomes a key part for the rest of the game. That's kind of cool, a little knick-knack to hold on to to remember your grandma. And maybe, ha, even better. This is so much better. I love it when this stuff happens. The previous scene, your grandpa gives you a letter. So he gives you grandma's favorite at the grave site. So a memento. And so you have to remember in the next scene that, oh, I got a lighter I can light the fireplace with. It's, it's great.
you know. Maybe what I'll do is your cart can only hold like two logs at a time, so you gotta go back and forth to get more logs. Uh, and then place two in the fireplace. So maybe we'll have some sort of uh, interaction thing. This is really cool. I really like this. I really like the direction I'm going with this already. I'll probably hate it tomorrow, but I really like it right now. So, uh, so interactable. So then we've got Grandpa's 75th birthday. So we're going to speed up time a little bit. The 75th birthday interactable. Um, So, I'm going to think about this for a little while, um, but I do like, it's going to be interactable. I'm thinking it's going to be forcing the player to do a choice between spending time, so preliminary, make the player choose between grandpa and friends. So let's... Start a little bit of a choice, I think. We'll see. I have no idea. But um, that's going to conclude the stream for now. I'll maybe be back on later on. Um, but i got to get going uh, doing some other things. So uh, thanks for joining me, and we'll be back to kind of start, continue along with this. But we've got a good start already. Um, going through kind of the, the start of the game, uh, the feeling I want to create and generate, as well as um, starting this whole, this whole adventure puzzle thing. Uh, one of the things I want to do is is really try to have puzzles span um, span realms, but span uh, views, you know, span worlds. Um, you know, I want to. I don't want just to be. Oh, where's the key to unlock this door? Oh, it's right, you know, two feet away on the table. No, I, I want you to. Oh, I remember the key was, you know, back in the in the guy's pocket that I knocked down or, you know, or something like that, you know, or back in the guard check that I passed or something, you know, something, you gotta make it obvious that it's a key and that it's important to get, but you don't actually have to get it until you get to the, to the door. So, but I want to work in that direction. Uh, and this was a great way, the idea of the lighter from the previous scene moving into the next scene, I think is a great start to that. So, uh, thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time.